Chimp. In January 1976, news broke of a phenomenon. Pictures showed an upright, bald ape called Oliver, who appeared to be a cross between a human and a chimpanzee, what scientists refer to as a humanzee. The existence of Oliver represented the first really tangible bit of, of ostensible evidence for a human-chimpanzee hybrid. Oliver's photograph shocked the world, and in the media frenzy that followed, he became an international celebrity. In Japan, his human-like behavior earned him cult status. In New York, some journalists described him as the missing link. Others dubbed him Bigfoot. Oliver gradually faded from the spotlight and eventually disappeared. Now, 30 years on, he has been found still alive. And with the latest DNA profiling, we can finally solve the mystery of the humanity. This is Oliver, an ape who's become a living legend. Perhaps the only example of his kind. He's baffled science for the last 30 years. He's a great mystery. No one's ever been able to explain why he is different. Something is in there more than an animal. To be in his presence, he's just strange. He's different. What first drew the public and the scientists to Oliver was his bizarre appearance and behavior. Psychology professor Gordon Gallup from the State University of New York in Albany will never forget the first time he set eyes on Oliver. I thought Oliver might be a humanzy. Oliver had some very peculiar morphological characteristics, facial characteristics that looked surprisingly human-like to me. To look at, Oliver is certainly no ordinary chimp. His head is bald and smaller than normal chimps. His jaw is not as pronounced as you'd expect, and his ears are pointed rather than rounded. His scent is different, and other chimpanzees want nothing to do with him. But it's his habit of always walking upright, something that normal chimpanzees just don't do, that made the scientists sit up and take notice. He'd been brought over from Africa as a baby in 1960 by animal trainer Frank Berger, and spent the first 16 years of his life with the Berger family at their home in Blackwood, New Jersey. Frank died a few years ago, but his widow Janet still trains chimpanzees to appear in films and on television. Her latest charge, Chippy, is no stranger to the camera. Good morning. Frank, when he was younger, my husband, he was a, a guide up in the Congo. His brother sent over three chimps. Well, two were chimps and one was Oliver. Oliver turned out to be very different from Chippy, or any other chimp she'd ever come across. When Oliver was about, I'd say about four or five months old, he just one day stood up and he was always up. Very, very seldom he ever put his knuckles on the ground. If he walked like uh, a half a block, he would walk upright. This guy, if you walk a half a block towards the end, he's, uh, 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 can't make it, you know. Come here, Chip. Chip, come here, son. Come on. Chippy, stand up. Up. Come on. Walk. Come on. Up, up, up. Up, 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 up. Because of the way their hips are made, most chimpanzees can only walk upright when coaxed like this, and then only for short periods of time. Unlike Oliver, Chippy soon goes back to walking on all fours. Janet and Frank Berger found the upright Oliver wasn't very good for business, as their other performing chimps shunned him. It didn't seem to bother Oliver, as he preferred the company of humans anyway. But he used to come in the house, and... Uh sit down to watch television and smoke a cigar, you know. You could give him chores. You'd say, uh, put hay in the wheelbarrow and, and take it over there. And he'd look where you're pointing. He would take it over there. A chimpanzee, you turn him loose, give him a wheelbarrow, he's gone. He's up a tree somewhere, you know. Oliver didn't behave like this to get any kind of reward. According to Janet, he simply wanted to do what humans do. See, this is what a chimp does. Now, Oliver wouldn't do that. Oliver was like a little person. He knew how to wash his hands, and, and uh, 
They're chimp. That's a typical chimp. <laughs> look who's up here. Look who's up there. Who's that guy? As Oliver reached sexual maturity, it wasn't simply being house-trained that singled him out from other chimps. He developed an interest in Janet Berger. You know, I always thought he was a cross between a human and a, and a, and a chimp. I really, I did. The way he acted, I've been around chimps all my life, and he was altogether different. And his problem was, when he was 16, then he wanted to make love to women, you know? He'd get a hold of you, couldn't get away from him. I'd holler, help, Frank. He didn't bite or nothing, just going to... Hug me and kiss me and, and, uh, and whatever, you know. <laughs> Oliver was becoming a real problem. Janet started looking for someone who could take him off her hands. Don't put your face on it. Ah, don't lick it. Professional pianist Vincent Pace was a friend of the Burgers and had known Oliver for years. He knew that Oliver's sexual advances towards Janet were becoming serious and that something had to be done. She went in this particular day and he became aggressive and he turned her around quickly, put her head down, bent her over and he mounted her. Vincent considered buying him. He even invited his mother along to meet this possible new addition to the family. Her reaction was typical of a first encounter with this unnerving creature. He walked out down the hallway exactly the way he walked the day I had seen him. Shoulders back, erect, very aware. And he walked directly over the table and she yelled out, Oh my God, she says, get him away from me. Seeing Oliver face to face, she became convinced she was staring at the offspring of a human and a chimpanzee. By now, other people were beginning to notice this strange-looking ape, including a New York attorney who had big plans for Oliver. Black